Modern Railways. In-depth railway news. The Elizabeth Line is the biggest addition to London's transport network for a generation. Well, hello, I'm here at Paddington Station in London and we're about to get a sneak preview of what the Elizabeth Line is going to be like. It's going to be open very soon and we're going to take a, a journey on it. So come down inside with me, we'll just go underground and take a journey on the class 345 to Liverpool Street and back. We'll be marking this in Modern Railways. You'll be able to read more about this preview in our April issue, but our main feature will come in the May issue, on sale towards the end of April, where we'll have a special supplement celebrating the opening of the Elizabeth Line. So where we are, by the end of this month, we will be done, finished, with what you might term the assured railway. We will then be at a point where we need to get a certain approval from the OR, which will come in certainly by, say, the end of April. But underneath all that, I know you're all going to ask us about the opening date. Underneath all that, what we really need is the opportunity of the operational staff to, to keep practicing, to get to the point of, I wouldn't say perfection, but get to the point of really good reliability. Andy's team is about a thousand people strong. Drivers, operations people, maintenance people, controllers. About a thousand women and men have to get in a position where they can reliably manage it. So that's why we say the opening of the railway will be in the first half of this year. So I think you'd agree this is a beautiful outcome. I think when this was excavated as a box station, and we've got three box stations in uh, the Elizabeth Line, it was excavated, the shard would fit comfortably inside this box. Comfortably. Shard's 302 meters tall. When we excavated this whole box, the shard would have comfortably sat inside it. That's how big this is. And behind this lip here is the back of the house. There are about 500 rooms here, which we can't take you to because they're now fully operated and operational with Andy's team. And the back of the house is bigger than the front of house. So you see how big this is. The back of house is at least 20% bigger. So you get the size of the scale of this engineering endeavor. Uh, beautiful job, I think, architecturally. These amazing uh, fluted columns, architectural concrete that were poured in situ that are all about 45 meters deep, holding up the station. Exceptional job done by the, the civil engineers. It's obviously a huge echo to Brunel's grade one listed building next door with these beautiful uh, imperial metal bricks and the brick slips. And if you look carefully, and I know you lot are very specialist people, they're built on the 10 foot square of Brunel. So I think this is a great outcome. But you will see a very different station when we get to Liverpool Street, which is one of our mine stations. Uh, the whole of TfL Rail, as you know it today, TfL Rail operates from Paddington out to the west, Reading and Heathrow, and Liverpool Street out to the east to Shenfield. That will all be rebranded as the Elizabeth Line from opening day, but the railway will operate as three separate railways from a customer perspective because we won't quite have the full interchange from an uh, operational uh, flexibility perspective. So initially it will be Abbeywood to Paddington, and if you want to uh, go to either of the other locations, you'll need to change from the Elizabeth Line station here up to the main line station to go west and the equivalent change at Liverpool Street to uh, up to the main line station there to go out east. The next phase we'll see through running uh, from Abbeywood to the west and then the final phase which uh, currently uh, around spring 2023 we'll see complete through running from Shenfield and Abbeywood through to uh, the uh, west. Um, as Mark said, we'll open with 12 trains an hour through the central section, so Paddington to Abbeywood. But when we get to that uh, final uh, section, we'll be 24 trains an hour through the central section. Uh, so 12 will reverse here at Paddington using the sidings at Westbourne Park and the auto reverse function. 12 will carry on west either to Heathrow or Paddington. Um, so it'll be a, a huge capacity benefit, as you know, about 10% additional capacity to the tube network when it opens. It will relieve some of the pressure on uh, Mark's favourite central line as you heard already um, it'll also take some pressure off the jubilee line as well 
uh, and as you know, huge uh, benefits from a uh, journey time perspective. Canary Wharf to Heathrow, I think in about 28 minutes or thereabouts. Um, so massive benefits uh, for communities east and west. Um, we're in the, the trial operations phase of the minute. Uh, I was at the exercise on Saturday, which was the fourth of our major trial operations exercises. We had a thousand volunteers, members of the public, members of the industry, uh, our own staff taking part in a train-to-train -train evacuation in the tunnel, followed by a full station evacuation at Canary Wharf, uh, which was all uh, went to plan, was extremely well managed, and we got our final uh, large-scale volunteer exercise this Sunday here at Paddington, actually, where we're testing uh, you know, frequency of service, so uh, may well be some of you involved in that. So that will then allow us, as Mark says, to get to uh, in effect, uh, ready state of the railway, and then it's pure familiarisation and operational proving uh, to give us the confidence that we can operate a reliable uh, and safe service uh, once we've got the ORR approval. So, uh, in a good place, uh, hugely exciting. We're going to go to 24 trains an hour, 9 car train, but it's built for 30 trains an hour, 11 car train. So you can see you know, a lot of discussion about the pandemic and what the effects are, but in the long run, this is a railway that's built for a lot of capacity. What a beautiful outcome it is. Full height platform screen doors. Obviously, platform screen doors create great safety for customers, but that's not why we put them in. We put the platform screen doors in to separate out the tunnels from the platform area, mostly for smoke extraction in the very, very unlikely event of a fire occurring. But also we cool the tunnels and we cool the trains. So this will be a, an exceptionally good customer experience. When we get on the train, um, the, have a think of the ride. Have a think of the ride, how smooth it is. And this, of course, is um, slab track formation, semi-resilient floating slab track, done because we've got extreme noise conditions on us in terms of crossrail, but you'll notice the ride it produces is uh, nothing like the central line, put it, put it that way. Right? Not that there's anything wrong with the central line, of course. So Paddington is operated, uh, it's a TfL station, uh, but it's operated by MTR Elizabeth Line. Liverpool Street is one of five of the central stations, which is again a TfL asset, but it's actually operated by LU. So the station in its entirety is operated and controlled by the underground. All the staff in the station will be underground, apart from there will be an MTR member of staff on each platform to put train dispatch if it's needed. Uh, and that's part of the arrangements we have with, with MTR. So, Liverpool Street Station, uh, enormous station, Mark can give you the facts on this, but actually stretches from Liverpool Street mainline to Moorgate. Uh, Moorgate is actually where the station is controlled from. The station ops uh, room is there, so it enabled us to create whole new facilities for our own uh, operation staff there, which has been a huge uh, benefit for them. Connectivity with the rest of the underground network here and, and National Rail. And of course, um, when construction was done, they discovered the site of the Bedlam burial ground as well. So about 3,300 uh, remains of, of, uh, from the Bedlam burial grounds, which were all relocated uh, and very carefully and considerably uh, moved. Uh, and there's some fantastic uh, artwork and, and plaques related to that up at the station. It's also one of the stations, uh, anybody who's particularly interested in different types of elevator, that has uh, two of the, I call them slope style, uh, incline uh, elevators, which are not totally unique to TFL, but are slightly different. Um, so that's, that's different as well. It's fast. Yes, it's had its problems, but this is going to be a fantastic railway. 
be able to read more about this preview in our April issue, but our main feature will come in the May issue, on sale towards the end of April, where we'll have a special supplement celebrating the opening of the Elizabeth line. Look out for that soon. Visit www.modernrailways.com for more interesting and essential information about the British Railway Network.